Woi woi, woi woi, woi woi. Then it then go on the radio again. Yo, if you want to smoke free weed, go board yourself. You need to go plant a seed. Go board yourself. Make your knowledge increase. Go board yourself. Go board yourself. Hey, all right. Welcome to episode number 88 of Grow Bud Yourself. We got a great show for you guys today. Our special guest is Walter Wood of Soul Spirit Farm. We got a grow tip on re-vegging your weed plants. Uh, We're going to take questions from listeners and we're going to talk a little bit about the news. So stick around. Episode 88 brought to you by Excelsior Extracts, Sweet Leaf Nutrients, Rocket Seeds, and Organic Rev Growth Stimulant. What if I told you you could grow healthier, faster growing plants and increase your yield? Well, you can with Organic Rev. You can even try it out for free. Rev is a growth stimulant, not a nutrient. So simply adding Rev to your current regimen can deliver dramatic results. I've been using Rev and it works great. I tried it out on my houseplants first and they absolutely love it. They responded immediately by greening up and looking healthy and strong. Like me, many cannabis growers have turned to Rev to increase fertilizer efficiency, improve nutrient uptake and root zone development, stimulate seed germination, and reduce transplant shock. And for a limited time, Grow Bud Yourself listeners can try out Rev for free. Simply head to organicrev.com slash GBY10, click on the free trial tab on the top left, pay $5 for shipping and handling, and get a free 4-ounce bottle of Organic Rev today. I know, once you try it, you'll love it as much as I do. And you can get 10% off your first order of Organic Rev with the promo code GBY10. So visit organicrev.com slash GBY10 and find out what Rev can do for your plants. Hey, all right, welcome back. And as always, thank you to DJ Jacques and Winstrong for the incredible Grow Bud Yourself tune. This is episode 88. It's time to set it straight. And you know what I'm saying? There ain't no half stepping. <laughs> that would be episode 44. Uh, yeah. I'm dating myself here mm. with the uh, references, but uh, here we are. And it's episode 88. We are excited to bring this one to you guys. Um, Mike, how you feeling? Ah, you know, so far so good, but it's early. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. But we have a, we have an exciting show, really good interview and, uh, and lots of great grow info. But, uh, before we get to all that, we should probably talk a little bit about the cannabis news. And, uh, you know, we've been focusing a great deal on, uh, on cannabis news in the Northeast of late. So we thought maybe we should pay attention to the West Coast and talk a little bit about what's going on there. And uh, MJ Biz just reported that the uh, the wholesale prices for cannabis in California have finally rebounded. So basically coming into this year, uh, cannabis farmers in California were facing uh, some difficult times, you know, after the pandemic and the massive price drop, and uh, some of them weren't necessarily sure how they were going if they were going to to survive but all of a sudden there's been this uh, really encouraging price increase so basically uh, the the decrease started about a year ago and uh, top quality cannabis had been going for only four hundred dollars a pound so that number has now rebounded to about a thousand dollars or so a pound which is good news for those farmers it's a 65 percent increase over the lowest period of last year And so it's sort of an encouraging moment in California. Growers are getting uh, more cash for their crops. Um, They say that the the downturn in pot prices was caused in part, at least, by a a glut of cannabis being available. Just uh, the market was inundated with pot. I guess that has resolved itself to some extent and prices are back up. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, this has been kind of the thing that we're following out there uh is you know how these farmers can survive and for for many years they survived on much higher prices because of the risk and 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 the risk that they took and also the uniqueness of their the quality of the product uh which has now spread all over the country uh so people are growing cali weed all over the country and all over the world uh or at least the the strains that you have out there now as far as the climates and the microclimates and all of that that's that's another story 
Uh, but even the indoor, uh, the point is uh, the farmers that can adjust to those prices dropping and, and, and rising are the ones that are going to survive and the ones with a product that's undeniable that people will spend extra money on will hopefully survive as well. I mean, that's really the question is who, who in the end, at the end, you know, who survives and how good is the product uh, or the medicine that they produce. Uh, and there are ways to survive. It's just a matter of adjusting to a new scenario where the, the cost isn't so much in the risk, uh, but in how, what you put into it, the quality of the product, uh, how well it burns, how well it tastes, how unique it is, uh, and all of those things. So it's good news to hear that the prices are, are you know, up for the farmers. Um, what I'd like to see is that price reflected for the consumer because a sixty dollar eighth is reflective of like a three or four thousand dollar pound. Uh, if you're just talking about, you know, just a regular Keystone profit kind of situation, but if you're buying a pound for five hundred dollars and still charging sixty bucks an eighth, that's price gouging. Uh, so I think that you know the the retailer needs to also adjust their prices accordingly as well. And I think everyone can survive at a lower price point, but uh, consumers are going to eventually go for the lower price point one way or another. Uh, and whether that's the underground or the legal market or how, or growing their own, they'll find a way. Um, and I say, let the market decide, you know, but also, uh, you know, let's make sure that the farmers can survive as well. Absolutely. It's important that, uh, that there's room for all of that in a uh, inclusive cannabis market. So that's what's going on in California. Just very briefly, we should also mention that a bill has been introduced in Alabama that would decriminalize small amounts of cannabis. A bill from uh, Democratic Senator Bobby Singleton has been introduced in Alabama, and that would uh, make up to two ounces of cannabis uh, punishable just by a civil fine of up to $250. However, lawmakers in Alabama are saying that there's essentially no chance that this bill actually passes, in part because it's an election year and uh, going soft on uh, cannabis would basically get all of them fired. So yeah, decriminalization unlikely to pass in Alabama. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but hopefully they'll come around. A lot of southern states are... are coming around you know if you're looking at oklahoma virginia um changes are happening in places where we never thought they would <laughs> yeah man we need the southern states to to get involved they've they've got a great uh, climate for growing and uh, it would be really i think important for just uh, cannabis legalization nationally for the southern states to uh to kind of get away from their prohibitionist uh, ideology so yeah uh hopefully um things work out a little bit better we're sorry alabama but uh this decrim bill uh appears unlikely to pass yeah so i should mention also last week we talked about uh fungus gnats our friends at dreamland organics uh cbd uh, sent me a tip on fungus gnats. They said uh, a little isopropyl alcohol and Dr. Bronner's soap uh, will help take care of fungus gnats as well. So um, if you're interested in that recipe, reach out to them, Dreamland Organics CBD uh, on Instagram. And also mention, you know, the last episode, 87, uh, we always try to come up with a funny little intro uh phrase for the uh episode uh to give it a unique uh kick and this one i'm not sure if everybody got it or if anybody got it <laughs> but it was a reference to uh the perfect storm mike did you get the reference i did not no oh okay <laughs> all right <laughs> it's a pretty obscure one but hopefully somebody somebody got the reference i i haven't seen any any evidence of that online but uh normally i would I would bother to look it up and see what it meant, but I, I just didn't. You were just like, Dan's crazy. Yeah, I'm just, whatever. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, well, there's a speech, you know, that that uh, Clooney makes at mm -hmm. the beginning. It kind of frames the whole movie, and, uh, you know, I appropriated the Clooney speech from Perfect Storm uh, and also probably dated myself yet again. This is the year I turned 50, so... Yeah. There's going to be a lot of Dan dating himself, I think, <laughs> to come. 
But so that's what that was in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> in case everyone was wondering. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, you throw things out there. Some of them fall flat. Some of them, if if just one person gets it, hey, I've done my job. Exactly. There, and you know, there was one perfect storm fan who was like, "Yes, oh, perfect. finally, yeah, you made <laughs> yeah. his day." Indeed, and that was that show was a fun one. We got to talk with Cushman uh, last week, and uh, this week we get to talk with our friend Walter Wood of Soul Spirit Farm, and this is. Uh, a farm in California where they grow uh, beyond organic cannabis, uh, sun-grown, living soil, uh, permaculture farm. And you can actually go visit the farm. So we're going to talk to him about that as well. He was brought to our attention uh, by our friend April Black uh, of Higher Way Travel because they actually do retreats on the farm where you can go there. And uh, it's a whole vibe, a whole scene where you just crash out. Uh, and enjoy the time spent on a on a living soil cannabis farm, learning how to grow the world's best cannabis and tread lightly on the earth, which I think is great. And hopefully the future uh, and where we take things, not just in California, but here on the east and everywhere else. So I guess without further ado, it's been a while since I said that. <laughs> Why don't we take a break and come back with Walter Wood of Soul Spirit Farm. If you're ready to start your own home grow, you're going to need some seeds. Fortunately, our sponsor Rocket Seeds has you covered. You can find seeds for hundreds of high-quality cannabis varieties at rocketseeds.com, including many of our strains of the Fortnite. Rocket Seeds boasts an incredible inventory of quality-tested cannabis seeds. Whether you're looking for feminized, autoflowering, regular, CBD, or fast version seeds, Rocket Seeds has it all. Plus, Rocket Seeds ships internationally and discreetly and provides excellent customer service. And as a special promotion just for our listeners, you can use the code GBY10 to get 10% off your order at Rocket Seeds. So follow at Rocket Seeds on Instagram. Remember to tell them Danny sent you. And check out rocketseeds.com today and get growing. Hey, all right. Welcome back. And uh, we are pleased to have a special guest for you guys this week. Uh, Soul Spirit Farm is a small family owned and operated farm in Trinity County, California, founded by Walter Wood and Judy Nelson. And uh, they specialize in earth friendly farming. And so I want to get an idea of what that earth conscious cannabis is all about. So welcome, Walter. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Uh, yeah, well, we, we, uh, we've always been very, very much into the, uh, the earth being, you know, very primary in our, our situation here. Uh, we've been cultivating out here on this property for 20 years. In that time, we, we don't till. So there's no tractor, uh, you know, releasing carbon into the air directly by burning and then by taking and releasing all of the carbon out of our soil and into the air. Uh, so we're sequestering carbon right away just by uh, eliminating the tilling. So we do our best to uh, use uh, nutrients from uh, our own land uh, and uh, the surrounding surrounding uh, hills uh, instead of importing nutrients, um, trying to uh, close close the loop. So, uh, so they say uh, we grow in the full sun and in the earth, um, both those being very, very important to us. They... Uh, they both uh, have huge environmental consequences uh using uh, lights to grow with as far as i can figure it would take about 30 or 40 acres of solar panels to grow one acre of indoor and that's depending on a sunny day even then so it's just not it's not sustainable to even do the best greenest indoor you can do it still takes just so much energy and we're blocking out the sun and then creating an artificial sun that's not not as wide spectrum and not as bright and just not as good as uh, as the natural sun. So we used to, you know, I, I learned to grow indoors, um, but uh, you know, as soon as I could, I could not wait to to get out into the sun to be able to uh, reduce our carbon footprint. 
And then we just take that all the way through. Um, so it's, it starts in our growing and it goes all the way through to our packaging, um, distribution, the whole, the whole thing. We try and keep uh, the earth in mind. Uh, we use recycled glass jars. Our lids are uh, reclaimed ocean plastic. We use hemp plastic uh, for our pre-roll tubes. We also use a uh, ocean reclaimed five pack, uh, ocean reclaimed plastic five pack. So we're really just trying to, like I said, keep closing those loops and uh, do what we can for uh, for the earth because uh, now's the time. It's uh, it's getting down to crunch time for the earth here, and we need to do what we can. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you also you mentioned as a part of earth conscious uh, cannabis farming. Uh, the use of permaculture. Can you elaborate a little bit about upon what that means uh, for uh, for the outdoor farmer? Right. Well, for for uh, me, permaculture. I took a permaculture course uh, before we actually went looking for land, which was really a really a good thing, um, and it helped really solidify all my interests uh, and actually put a name to them because I was interested in, well, how do you build the best, the most environmentally friendly house? How do you do the best job farming? How do you create these permanent um, systems that, that benefit us all and save us all time and energy and lead to healing of the earth? And so the permaculture helped me get siting that made sense. So we have two wheel drive access, so we don't have to have a big old four wheel drive truck to get to our farm. Um, we have good elevation, so there's not too much snow. Um, we have water, our water is, uh, gravity, you know, coming down the mountain, just lots of, of little things like that. And then just, uh, doing, we do, um, we, we, uh, rotationally graze pigs and chickens separately. Uh, and, and so they're, they're always on the move. They're never in a spot long enough to create harm. They're only in a spot long enough to really improve it. They eat some of the roots, some of the veggies, some of the bugs. And then, and so that makes their, you know, because we are what we eat and we, they are what they eat. So they're eating healthier. They're never living in a pigsty or a nasty chicken coop because they're always on the move. So it's always on fresh green grass fresh spot and uh, just, you know, that's building our soil and closing, closing our loops. Uh, we don't have uh, to have an acre of grain growing because we have a couple of pigs and a couple of chickens and that's feeding a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also noticed that you're, you're DEM pure certified and sun and earth certified. Um, what exactly does that mean? Well, both of those certifications uh, mean that we are beyond organic. Uh, there's no, no synthetics allowed, no pesticides, uh, no petroleum pesticides, anything like that. Um, they're both, both of them are, they're fairly similar in that they're both, like I say, beyond organic, regenerative, um, you know, working towards not just not destroying the earth, but actually healing the earth uh dragonfly earth medicine they're based out of canada and they're they're really amazing folks um if you haven't haven't checked them out you need to uh they're they're just all about sharing the knowledge on on rebuilding these systems and and that and uh they they're a peer peer certified so uh other members of the dem pure collective come out and check out your farm and make sure that you know you're closing those loops and uh and things like that and Sun and Earth is similar. It's uh, uh, we use uh, Dr. Bronner actually is a um, what do you call it? It's a split off from them, um, and uh, they're you know beyond organic. Uh, they also have workers' rights uh, being as a, a big part of it, and making sure that we uh, also are involved in helping out in our communities. And so. Those are just ways for us to say, look, we're not just saying we're earth friendly, but you know, here's, here's, a, here's a couple of people to back up what we're saying. And uh, so, yeah, we're just, just uh, like I said, you know, doing our best to close those loops. And uh, that includes uh, getting, getting these uh, people to, to find out how can they purchase, you know, some, some uh, cannabis that, that is grown with uh, good intentions. Absolutely. We actually had Dragon uh, Dragonfly Earth Medicine on the show, uh, episode seven, way back when. Oh, awesome! 
Yeah, it's a pleasure to speak with them about uh, regenerative farming because it's not just about uh, you know lowering your carbon footprint, but actually healing the soil because the soil can store carbon. It's the only real solution at this point. And uh, people can actually come and visit you at uh, Soul Spirit Farm as well, right? Yeah, no, we uh, we love to have visitors. Uh, we've had people from from all all the area different all different parts of the U.S. and uh, and beyond. Um, now that was one of the things we we're really really excited about when this legal happened is uh, kind of snuck up on us in a way. We kind of thought we would have to stop growing cannabis to be able to have people come out and see our permaculture lifestyle. Our, we built a straw bale house that's off grid using solar and micro hydro and you know the fruit trees and and just closing those loops and and trying to show people how what we can do and how we can how we can do this and we always thought we'd have to stop growing cannabis uh at least on scale to to be able to do that and then legal happened and we're like oh shoot we can actually have people out to the cannabis farm we can and and it became a thing too where we were we were going to some of these conventions and we found people even in the industry that had never seen plants in the ground when they thought of a plant, all they could think of was something sitting in a, you know, bag of peat moss in a, a hydro system indoors. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's a skill set and all that. I'm not going to diss all that, but it's, it's a totally different thing <laughs> than farming in the earth, in the sun, using the natural rhythms of the earth. Um, and, and we just really, really wanted to be able to share that with people. So we have people out for a really, really amazing glamping experience, we call it. Um, it's, uh, we have these nice tents with beds in them. Uh, run, everyone's got their own little bathroom unit with hot running water and showers. And we do farm to table meals with the food we raise here and get locally and try and show people a really great time. We go down to the river one day and either go raft in or just hang out the river depending on who and what and all these things. But yeah, it, it's really been special uh, to be able to show people uh, what we're doing out here. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Uh, I'd like, I'd love to come for a visit. Um, my question also, you know, you're obviously competing with much larger interests with much more money uh, and lower prices as things change here out East and, and we get closer to legalization. Um, what's your advice for craft farmers, craft cannabis people in order to compete uh, and survive? Because I mean, obviously farms are, it's not all the farms are survi surviving. No, it, it's really kind of crazy out right now. It, it really is tough. We're losing tons of farmers right now. I mean, I would say if you've got any money right now, buy a legislator. By, by your government um, because somebody else will. Um, and we thought in California, we had a one acre cap and uh, at midnight as they're signing it into law that disappeared. And between that and then the taxes right now, the, the taxes are completely out of control. You know, I don't know, like I would, yeah, if, if I were having to do it all over again, I think I would have uh, gone into trying to lobby the legislature instead of trying to farm. Uh, it's such a hot mess right here in California right now. It's, I don't, you know, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're on, we're on the very edge. Everyone I know is just on the very edge. We don't know how we're going to keep it up because it's not even just that they're producing the product for less, they're they, you know, because of all their um, economies of scale, their packaging costs and all these costs get reduced just, re you know, dramatically. So um, packaging costs of one twentieth or one fiftieth what we're paying, um, things like that, you know, uh, can happen with economies of scale. And then these a lot of these folks, they are these corporate brands. And I don't know if you're following the brands at all, but, you know, big brands are here for a flash and then they're gone. Some of them last a year or two, and some of them have even lasted maybe almost three, but they're struggling, struggling. And they're the ones going out there and pushing these eight and ten dollar re uh, sorry, wholesale eights. I, I actually saw a ten dollar retail eight lately. Um like the the, <laughs> the ten dollar retail eighth is, you know, five three, five dollars wholesale for an eighth. Well, that doesn't even cover the taxes. So, I mean, really, we, we have to focus on craft. We have to focus on sustainability. 
we have to separate ourselves out in the ways that we can. We can grow a superior product. We have to get the market educated. Unfortunately, it's up to us to educate the market um, that there is a difference between, you know, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's the, the comparison isn't quite straight, but if you compare going into a wine store and going in and making your purchase based on T on alcohol percent, but it's not even that direct of a correlation because THC is not actually the whole number, whereas alcohol is. You know, we, I can, I, I've had some 10 or 12 percent THC stuff that'll knock you on your butt. Um, it's because that's only one of the numbers. We don't have the science yet. We don't have all the numbers. We're not testing for all the things. We don't understand it all. So we really, we, we have to, we have to get this the consumers educated about what. You know what is a where where do we need to go with this and and if you want craft farms if you want this nice tasty medicine that's really going to heal you you have to support the craft farms um, and it it will cost more uh, our product does cost more yeah I mean that's what we're trying to do is just uh, you know encourage the community and the and the purchaser uh, to vote with their pocketbook. And purchase the the product that they wish to see in the marketplace, uh, meaning sun grown cannabis, uh, grown in a conscious manner, uh, and packaged properly in in uh, as you mentioned biodegradable packaging, uh, and even the pre rolls are in uh, you know compostable material and stuff. So I think uh, really it's 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 about just educating the consumer and encouraging them to vote with their pocketbook and possibly maybe the idea you mentioned wine, uh, of Appalachians, uh, which is how, uh, the smaller wineries can compete with the larger producers is, um, you have, to, you know, it has to be from Trinity County, uh, to count as Trinity, uh, medicine and, uh, likewise with Mendocino and, and, Humboldt and, and anywhere else. And I think, you know, what about a lesson uh, for the home grower out here in the East? Because we've got some, you know, situations where we can grow six plants per person, uh, 12 plants per household. Uh, and some of that can be done outdoors uh, in a regenerative, regenerative way. Uh, but we don't quite have the same climate uh, as you guys, and, and, and there's also microclimates all throughout the East. Uh, but what would you recommend to someone interested in growing their own? So, so, so one of the things that, uh, that folks can do to uh, eliminate the electrical use is to consider um, not a normal skylight. There's a solar tubes, they're called. Uh, they don't bring in all the extra heat into a house the way a traditional skylight does, but they bring in that amazing sunlight and then you could have that in a climate inside your house or in your garage or something like that where you can control the climate a little better uh an insulated greenhouse um, is another thing that that i'm really going to start working on out here is not just the normal hoop house but it's got a north wall that that's insulated and then some thermal mass too that's something that holds temperature like water or a nice thick uh, cob wall, right? So I'm th planning on doing the straw bale with a thick cob or uh, light clay wall on the inside to help absorb the heat during the day. And then that helps it not overheat during the day. And then it reflects that back out in the night. Um, our, our traditional hoop houses and, and greenhouses are very inefficient, but with a little bit of design care and thought, uh, they can be made into uh, really wonderful structures. And uh, and you get to experience that real sun. Um, Dragonfly has got a lot of uh, information on on uh, like how to connect your indoor flower to the earth still, you know, using like, I think they'll use like maybe grounding rods and things or something, but just to try and bring in that connection, even if you are having to remain separated um, it has vibrations and, and, uh, resonance and, uh, and all that. And to be tied in to the earth, if you can, is just really, really key. Uh, one thing that, that resonates too with me a lot is, uh, one round of light deprivation. 
then you can choose when you bring in your harvest. So, you know, depending on your microclimate and all that, for us, if we let our things go full season out here, they start bordering on the, on a little too late. Uh, it gets into October, the weather's not quite as nice, the sun's a little low in the sky. If we can bring those in a few weeks earlier by, by uh, doing light deprivation, meaning sh what we do is we give them from 7.40 a.m. to 7.40 p.m. of the tarps are open, but then we have these blackout tarps that are black on one side, on the inside, and white on the outside. And you roll those down, and so then they get that 12-12, and you can start them flowering, you know, a few weeks or months or whatever early, and try and time it for your best weather cycle in your region, so that you're not in three weeks of rain, hopefully, if you, you know, all the weather patterns are... Uh, <laughs> becoming less reliable so so this may be a, a difficult chore uh we're, we're finding our weather is uh not very stable right now either right um well now if people in california want to find your products uh flour or pre-rolls uh or you know people from outside of california want to come and visit the farm or, or learn more about uh earth conscious outdoor cannabis growing um what uh, you know, give people your uh, website and uh, social media info real quick. Totally. Uh, www.soulspiritfarm and soul is S O L like the sun soulspiritfarm.com. And then the glamping is at www.soulspiritretreats.com. And then we have the same for Instagram is uh, soul spirit farm and um, soul spirit retreats. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Walter. Uh, I love uh, the strain names here. Some of them, uh, Soul Shine in particular, just like you mentioned, S-O-L. Uh, and uh, you've got Donnie Burger, Sour Diesel, Mother's Milk, L.A. Kush, uh, a lot of amazing uh, flower strains. And then you've got pre-rolls. Um, and as you mentioned, the packaging, uh, the growing practices, and even the way, you, you know, the, the crew uh is treated and 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 the everything is just it's done the right way and i hope uh i hope people will check you guys out i hope people will support uh craft cannabis you're getting a, a better product uh and you're also sus you know sustainable product so thank you walter and uh thanks for being on the show well, thanks so much for having me it was really good talking to you guys all right and uh we will be back after these messages if you're a grower or you're thinking about starting your first crop, then you need to know about Sweet Leaf Plant Nutrients. Sweet Leaf has an incredible line of organic fertilizers and, of course, their legacy line that includes organic and some synthetic fertilizers. Check them out at sweetleaf.com. That's S U I T E L E A F.com. The code DANKO15 gets you 15% off everything at Sweetleaf. That's 15% off their signature line of nutrients as well as essentials like complete indoor hydroponic grow tent kits and grow lights, plus awesome apparel, backpacks, and much more. If you join our Patreon, you'll get access to additional codes worth 20 and even 25% off. Patreon supporters also receive free Sweetleaf nutrients just for signing up. Sweetleaf provides all the tools necessary for the modern gardener. Check them out at sweetleaf.com and remember the code DANKO15. All right, welcome back. And uh, thanks to Walter uh, Soul Spirit Farm, uh, very insightful. And uh, anything you can do to green up your grow, I would say, is always a good thing and uh, results in better tasting medicine. And who wouldn't want that? Of course. So we are now in the cultivation section of the show, and uh, we've reached the point where Dan usually uh, gives a little grow tip that's going to help you become a better cultivator. So what are we going to talk about this week? Yes, so I'd like to talk about uh, re-vegging, um, and this is also known as uh, regeneration, but we usually call it re-vegging, and basically what it is, is the, it's the process of reverting a flowering plant back into the vegetative stage to produce foliage. 
Um, and so basically you're doing what doesn't happen naturally out in the wild. What happens naturally is the plant, uh, the males, you know, pollinate the females, the females fill up with seeds and those seeds fall and that becomes the next generation. This is what would happen if you harvest part of the plant and left the rest of it on and it went back into the vegetative stage without uh, a winter, but just right back into spring. So, uh, you know, there are places where this can happen naturally as well, which is um, kind of crazy. But, um, you know, you're, you're taking an annual and you're turning it into a perennial, so to speak, at least for like one other harvest. Um, the benefits are basically... The best, the best benefit is preserving a strain, right? Like something that's just so extraordinary that you grew from seed, uh, but you never got a clone of, and you don't have any more seeds of. It's a phenotype that uh, just surprises you out of the blue in your garden, but it only does so basically at harvest time. So you've har- you harvest the plant, uh, you leave uh, some branches and le- ma- leave some fan leaves on there right? You harvest the flowers, but you leave some of that on there. And then you put it back into the vegging stage under vegging lights. So 18 hours of light on, uh, six hours off or more. You could do 20 hours on, uh, four hours off. Even, even if you want to go extreme, you could do 22, uh, hours on and two hours off. Just, I wouldn't go full 24 hours. That's just my weird thing. I don't believe it. I, I think the plant needs to rest. Uh, and then, you know, The other benefit is you can flower from the same plant. Now, uh, the drawback to that is you're going to get a much smaller yield uh, for whatever amount of time. You you don't have to veg the plant, uh, but the new growth that pops out of there is it's not super strong and great. So you kind of have to like uh, keep it real healthy and you will get another yield, but it would be smaller. That's if you flower out the plant. Um, the real reason why people reveg or or why I would recommend revegging is to preserve genetics, not really to harvest from the same plant. Unless you got a plant in a pot, uh, you know, that maybe you grew outside, um, you harvested from, and then you just bring it in and, and, and grow it in the winter in the closet uh, under lights. Uh, in that case, you know, you, you've shortened your veg time significantly. Uh, and even though you'll get a smaller yield from that plant, you, uh, you also won't have a very long veg time. There's already a root system developing. Um, so, uh, like I said, basically, you just leave uh, some branches intact uh, closer to the base of the plant uh, and some fan leaves. You got to have that. Uh, reset the photo period. Uh, change the nutrient reg You know, back into more of a nitrogen-heavy uh, nutrient profile to be more conducive to the early stage of growth because you want the plant to be in the veg veg stage. So uh, go, you know, you want to feed it uh, appropriately as well for that stage. Uh, and this might take a while uh, of just sitting under the light without much action happening. Uh, but eventually, m- with most strains, you will see uh, shoots start coming out. And in, in the case of of when you're doing this for uh, preserving genetics, what you should do is then take clones from that plant. Don't use that plant as your mother plant uh, because it's obviously been through some stress uh, having to flower and then go back into veg. I would take cuts of uh, the shoots that come off of there, uh, root those, and use those cuttings uh, to search for a mom uh, if that's what you're after is preserving those genetics. So. Um, that's basically revegging in a nutshell. Um, sometimes it happens accidentally, um, which is kind of wild, you know, especially out in the wild. If a plant just sort of survives uh, a, mi- a very mild winter, uh, then just starts, shoots start coming out again in the spring. Uh, it doesn't normally happen, but it can. Uh, and like I said, um, when you reveg, uh, I, I wouldn't do it so much for, for growing and then flowering out the revegged plant. I would do it because uh, you you grew something amazing and you didn't realize it was amazing, so you weren't able to take cuttings of it during the veg stage. The smart thing to do is to take cuttings of anything you grow from seed uh, that you're going to flower out. Uh, take three or four, maybe even uh, half a dozen cuttings of the plant during the veg stage 
and have those rooting while you're flowering the plant. Because if, if you do come up with something amazing, you will have uh, exact copies of it that didn't even have to go through the reveg uh, process at all. Um, so this is in the case of where something really totally surprises you uh, out of the blue. A, an amazing pheno pops out and you only realize it after, the ga after it's flowered uh, and you're harvesting and then you're like, okay, this I want to grow again, but I don't have any copies of, so I'm going to reveg it. And so that is really the reason to do it. Um, th but there are, like I said, you can uh, reveg plants and then flower them uh, a second time. Uh, just be ready for smaller yield. Uh, and there you have it, revegging. All right, revegging our grow tip for episode 88. And uh, now it is time to take some questions from our listeners. And if you have a question you would like answered on the show, do get in touch with us. You could email us. That would be info at growbudyourself.com. Uh, what do you say we dive right in? Let's do it. All right, so let's start with James, and he writes, uh, Hello, Danny and Mike. In last week's show, you talked about growing for cash. I was curious about uh, what would be some of the best 45-day strains out now for potency and yielding. Uh, thanks for the show and the info. So what would you say to James? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, if, you know, if you just want that really quick bang for your buck, uh, 45 days is about as short as you can get uh, for a flowering time. Uh, it's about six and a half weeks or so. Uh, six to seven weeks is, is kind of there. So uh, the first strain that comes to mind is AK-47, uh, named for its 47-day uh, flowering time originally. It's kind of gotten a little longer over the years, but um, that's obviously a very strong, potent strain uh, that does finish in less than seven weeks, typically. Um, there's also fast strains now, like specifically fast version, uh, which if you check out our sponsor, Rocket Seeds, uh, you'll see there's a whole category there uh, on their websites. Uh, if you go to rocketseeds.com, uh, there's feminized, there's autoflowering, there's regular, uh, there's CBD seeds, and then there's fast version seeds. And I think there's about maybe 35, 36 of them there, different strains uh, that all have a very fast flowering time between that six and seven week period. So, you know, somewhere between around 45 to 48 days uh, of a flowering time. Uh, there's also, you know, other strains that uh, flower fairly, fairly quickly, but maybe not 45 uh, days. Uh, Super glue, I'm thinking of red dwarf, uh, whatever it's going to be is going to typically be uh, very indica dominant. Uh, purple cheese is a fast one. Um, so you're not going to find a lot of sativa dominant stuff that's going to finish that quickly. Uh, but there's a good, good amount of options uh, at our sponsor, Rocket Seeds, if you look up fast version. Uh, but any, any seed bank that you go to, uh, you're going to want to basically find something that's about uh, seven weeks. Six to seven weeks is right there around 45 days. Uh, but again, you know, it, some plants that might take an extra week or two uh, could be well worth the, the extra time spent. So uh, we, I, the way I talked about it was we were cash croppers and we wanted it to finish fast. But a lot of that had to do with the risks we were taking and, uh, and just wanting to, <laughs> to move on to the next harvest and, and uh, have that, all that happen rather quickly because we were, we were scared. You know, and we wanted to get the most out of uh, every day that uh, we were putting ourselves into that uh, risky situation. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, there are fast version seeds now, and there are lots of strains out there, indica dominant ones in particular, that'll finish very quickly for you. And I hope that helps. Well, there you go, James. Uh, some options there for you. Uh, let's go to Nacho, who writes, What's up, guys? I've been growing for about a year or so, and I have a friend in Mass who recommended your podcast to me. I'm loving it so far and trying to catch up. That's good, man. Like, that's how it works. Everybody spread the word. Tell one friend if you listen to the show, and, uh, and Dan and I will be on easy street. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, and the cool thing is, I mean, we've now we're close to 200 shows, I think. If you add free weed and grow bud yourselves together um, since 2011, I think, you know, we did 103 or 112 of the free weeds. And now we're at 
88 uh, grow bud yourself. So it's a lot. Uh, you know, you could fast forward through, <laughs> through the uh, through the boring parts and, and get right to the interviews and the and the grow. Uh, but you know, you could also get to know us over the years and see how, how things have changed over the last uh, decade plus that we've been doing this thing. Because uh, I'm sure it's I haven't gone back and listened to a lot of those old shows, but I'm sure it's probably pretty funny to uh, to go back and hear, you know, yeah, through the years. Not sure I would recommend it, but. But that option is there for everybody. Anyway, Nacho continues. He says, my question is, uh, when you decide to harvest your plants, does a period of 24 to 48 hours in complete darkness really benefit your trichome production and or result in a higher potency for the final product? So many people say this is bro science. I can't seem to find any studies on it. So what's your take? Uh, What do you think, Dan? Uh... My honest opinion is I don't think it makes too much of a difference either way, but I do recommend at least 12 hours of darkness prior to harvest just because uh, you're just going to have a better terpene profile at that point. So going 24 or 48 hours, it it certainly can't hurt. You're not going to be, the plant's not really soaking in a ton of light or um, creating much more in that two day period that you're going to get from having the lights on during that time so uh and and terpenes do uh, are are volatile so you know maybe they there can be a benefit to having that um i wouldn't go more than 48 hours for sure uh but i don't know the verdict's not in on that i do know i wouldn't harvest at the end of the light cycle so you know after 12 hours of light was on and then harvest then because the plant uh has just, you know, been going through the the process of taking in all that light. And so I would give it a rest. I don't know exactly how long of a rest, at least 12 hours and no more than 48. Um, And I do think that you'll you'll result in slightly better uh, terp profile. And I just don't know how much difference two days makes. It's more important to concentrate on the full, you know, eight weeks (laughs) of flowering and make sure to dial everything in during all of that time uh, than to really focus on the last two days. But uh, I do think uh, it definitely helps to harvest at night or during the dark cycle. All right, there you go. Uh, Thank you, Nacho. Hope that helps you out there. Uh, Let's uh, let's do another one here. This is from Billy and he writes, uh, Hey guys, my plants have aphids. And my buddy suggested I use lace wings. What are they and how do I deploy them? All right. This is an interesting one. Uh, Lace wings are uh, actually they're green lace wings. Um, And these are predatory insects. Uh, I hope I can pronounce this correctly, but they're from the Chrysopidae family. Chrysopidae. Uh, The larvae feed on the eggs uh, and immature stages of pests, including spider mites, thrips, white flies and more. Uh, So you want green lacewing larvae. Uh, They work great in an IPM, uh, which is integrated pest management system. Uh, It's an organic alternative to potentially harmful pesticides uh, and chemicals. Um, The good news is the larvae love to devour aphids uh, so much that they're referred to as aphid lions. Uh, You can order them online. Um, They're shipped as eggs. They come in an inert medium, uh, typically made up of rice, uh, bran hulls, um, that kind of thing. You just disperse that mix around the base of your plants. Uh, Within a few days, they hatch, and they start munching on the aphids and their eggs. So uh, green lacewings are a great predatory insect, and uh, again, they are from the Chrysopidae family. Yes, easy for you to say. All right, so uh, thank you, Billy. We hope that helps, and uh, that's going to do it for the cultivation segment, but we are going to take another question over on Patreon, and that's going to be about humidity levels in the drying room. So uh, head over to patreon.com slash Danny Denko if you're interested in that. Uh, Thank you to everybody who wrote in this week. If you have a question you would like answered here, uh, you could email us. That again is info at growbudyourself.com. What do you say we take a short recess, come back, and uh, end the episode? Let's do it. Hey 
Hey guys, I want to tell you about one of our favorite sponsors, Excelsior Extracts. Outcast and TOH from Excelsior are incredible people, incredible growers, and they make an amazing product. Their THC-infused pain rub is made by patients for patients, and it provides powerful relief from pain. This product was developed to treat Outcast's chronic pain, and trust me, this is a super potent topical that really works. You can find out more about Excelsior on Instagram at Excelsior Extracts. That's E-X-C-E-L-S-I-O-R-E-X-T-R-A-C-T-S. Uh, DM them there to learn more about their amazing pain rub. And don't forget to tell them that Grow Bud Yourself sent you. All right, welcome back, and it's the wrap. I want to thank uh, Walter Wood of Soul Spirit Farm. Check him out, Soul Spirit Farm, S O L, spiritfarm.com. Uh, want to thank all the sponsors Excelsior Extracts. Check out the THC infused pain relief rub, Rocket Seeds, cannabis seeds. Use the code GBY10 for 10% off at rocketseeds.com. Sweet Leaf Plant Nutrients. Use the code DANKO15 for 15% off. Uh, organic Rev Growth Stimulant. The code there is GBY10 for 10% off. And if you join our Patreon page, you get some of these products for free. So uh, check out the different tiers there. Uh, it starts at $4.20 a month. If you can afford the $4.20 a month to support us, we would really appreciate it. We want to get up over 100 uh, Patreon supporters. We're going to start doing giveaways and all kinds of other stuff over there, too, if we can get to that magic number. So please, it's a cup of coffee, $4.20 a month. Uh, is the uh, the lowest tier that you can join. So check out patreon.com slash Danny Danko. For less than the price of a cup of coffee a month, you could support two middle-aged potheads. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And, you know, we've got sponsors for the show, but they jump in, jump in and out, and uh, we'd really love to have you guys help support us as well. Uh, and that's the best place to do it is Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, Dot com. You get a bunch of free stuff too. You get stickers. I got Grow Bud Yourself stickers. Uh, we got Grow Bud Yourself stationery. You get a, a, a note uh, directly from us. You can get a copy of my book. You can get Sweet Leaf Nutrients, Sweet Leaf Nutrient codes for even more than 15% off. So please uh, join up over there. We've got merch and all kinds of fun stuff. So um, thank you to you guys for listening and supporting. Uh, check us out on YouTube on your smart TV, uh, on your tablets, on your uh, iPads, iPods, uh, MP3 players, 8-track cassettes, <laughs> calculators, abacuses. Mm. I don't know. Wherever you get podcasts. I mean, you're already listening, so I don't have to really tell you. Just, you know, come back next week and listen again. How's that sound? All right, swing and a miss. The game is over. <laughs> Let's put this one in the books.